What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and today I'm back to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Now if you guys don't know, we do have a playlist covering all types of dreadnoughts. We go to the Contemptors all the way down to the Chaos Variants. Uh, we've got a ton on there. Honestly, the playlist is pretty huge. We've got Hellfire Dreadnoughts, Seeds Dreadnoughts, Chaplain Dreadnoughts, Corn Dreadnoughts, Sonic Dreadnoughts, and the list goes on and on and on. And now we talk about the most recent Dreadnought that has come out of the Imperial Forces, the Redemptor Dreadnought, aka the Primaris Dreadnought. So without further ado, let's give you a little bit of background on Dreadnoughts and then dive into the lore on the Redemptor. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you guys that the giveaway winners will be announced this week. So keep your eyes peeled for that and uh, hopefully you guys win some awesome prizes. So let's jump into this Dreadnought lore. When Space Marines suffer grievous wounds that even their superhuman physique cannot endure, their body is born from the battlefield with great reverence. Such warriors die of their wounds, but even the mightiest will still survive, and then they are preserved from their final rest via taken to the cyborg web of an armored sarcophagus so that they may continue to serve in another form casting off his damaged mortal frame, and then becoming a Dreadnought. Now Dreadnoughts are war incarnate, towering machines that advance forward with thunderous strides. Fiery death roars from their heavy weapons mounted on their hulls. They are terrifying foes indeed, fighting with all the skill and ferocity of a space marine, but combined with the durability and firepower of a battle tank. The pilot himself survives only as a tightly curled and shriveled organic component deep inside the Dreadnought, which is at once his reborn body and his tomb. Sustained but barely kept alive within the sarcophagus, the link between his physical being and the Dreadnought systems is absolute, for he exists inside there for the remainder of his life. The sepulcher that contains a chapter's Dreadnoughts is a holy shrine, and the Tech Marines tend to their charges with great care fastidiously applying sacred oils and undulants while chanting the litanies of preservation. To honor these courageous warriors, the fallen heroes are allowed to sleep away for centuries, until need calls them to war once more. Now there are many variants of Dreadnought, such as the Venerable Dreadnought, the Ironclad Dreadnought, Contemptor Dreadnoughts, and so on. But today we will be talking about the mighty Redemptor Dreadnoughts. Redemptor Dreadnoughts are giant war engines that crush bone and splinter skulls as they bludgeon through the enemy ranks. They are taller, broader, and more cunningly wrought than the Dreadnoughts of traditional design. These Goliaths are battle-powered, and they are hyper-dense reactors and sophisticated fiber bundles push them forwards on the battlefield. They can accelerate from a thundering stomp to a thunderous, lopping gait that shakes the ground below them barrowing through hails of fire in glorious defiance. One jointed arm of the Redemptor is given over to either a devastating onslaught gathering cannon, a rotary weapon that can shoot through a band of heretic Astartes in a single pass, or the Macroplasma Incinerator, a gun that harnesses the heat of a captive sun to melt enemy tanks to bubbling sludge. The other arm usually ends in an articulated power fist of advanced design. With this piston gauntlet, the Redemptor can tear even bio-beasts and demon engines apart at close quarters. Such is the miraculous design of the Redemptor's natural links that its inhabitant, despite being entombed in a box-like sarcophagus within the Dreadnought's chest, can exercise control with surprising dexterity and speed. It is whispered that the advanced systems of the Redemptor are a curse as well as a blessing. The Martian tech savants that first built these walking machines of destruction spared little thought to the health of the incumbent, seeing him as little more than another part to be interred or replaced as necessary. Many of these Redemptors that have fought for a sustained period have already had their sarcophagi replaced, the original pilots burned out by the intensity of the machine's destructive prowess. Now that little bit right there leads me to believe that the cult of the machine, the Skitari, the people of Mars, whatever you want to call them, I feel like they're going to betray the Imperium. Slowly but surely, I think they will. Um, now, as we all know, there's there's a truce between the Emperor and the Skitari or the Cult Mechanicus, 
that, you know, they can continue on their work into the machine spirit and all things machinery as long as they share their their findings with Terra and Terra wouldn't, you know, attack and whatnot. So that being said, I think this is a little way of getting back at the humans, you know, not caring for the space marines and stuff, you know, having these overpowered dreadnoughts slowly kill their uh, their wounded warrior inside. So I think there's I think there's a little shadiness going on right there. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know down below. But for now, let's jump into the war gear and weaponry of this Redemptor Dreadnought. The Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon is a variant of the standard Onslaught Gatling Cannon that has been sized to fit the Redemptor Dreadnought and a Repulsor Armored Transport. Now this weapon is powerful enough to chew through armor as well as infantry with ease. Usually it serves as the primary weapon of the Repulsor. The Heavy Flamer a heavy flamer is a larger and more powerful version of the standard flamer, capable of projecting hotter and denser flames. This means that the heavy flamers possess better armor piercing capabilities than regular flamers. The Icarus Rocket Pod The Icarus Rocket Pod is a cylindrical rocket pod capable of launching up to seven surface to air rockets that is usually mounted above the head of a Redemptor Dreadnought and it is used as a form of personal air defense. The Fragstorm Grenade Launcher is a type of Imperial Grenade Launcher wielded by the Primaris Space Marines. It is deployed for use as an anti-personnel fragmentation weapon by squads of aggressors, or sometimes they are seen in the chest of the Redemptor Dreadnought. The Redemptor Fist A Redemptor Fist is a massive, articulated, dreadnought-sized power fist of advanced design used by the Primaris Space Marine Redemptor Dreadnoughts as a primary melee weapon on one of their two weapon arms. With this gauntlet, they can easily tear through Tyranid Bio Beasts and Demon Engines. And now onto my favorite weapon, the Macro Plasma Incinerator. Now this weapon is a dreadnought sized version of the standard plasma incinerator, a weapon that harnesses the heat of a captive sun to melt away enemy tanks to sludge. Other than its greatly increased size and corresponding damage output, it is essentially identical to the smaller weapons used by the infantry of the Adeptus Astartes. The Storm Bolter Storm Bolter is a double barreled version of the standard Bolter. It is heavier and it causes more recoil than a normal Bolter, but it causes double the firing rate. And lastly, we have the regular Onslaught Gatling Cannon, which is essentially a smaller version of the heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon. Now, it's basically a powerful Imperial rotary ballistic weapon capable of firing thousands of rounds at the enemy. And that's all the lore we have on this bad boy. My question to you guys is, have you guys played him in 8th edition yet? Have you fielded him on the battlefield? And if so, what's the better, uh, what's the better uh, configuration to go with? In my opinion, it's not worth it going with the Gatling gun, because in my opinion it's better to do more damage than to hit more. So because of that, I'm going to say go with the Plasma Incinerator. Uh, I always like Plasma weapons, they're really cool. Uh, yeah, they can blow up in your face and kill you, but wielding Plasma is just badass. Now when I first saw this guy, I was like, what the heck is this? This looks heavily Tau inspired. But after seeing different configurations, seeing it in different color schemes, yeah, it basically looks like an upgraded version of the old school Dreadnought. But in my opinion, it looks just like a Leviathan, just kind of redesigned. Now the Leviathan Dreadnoughts are the Forge World exclusive Dreadnoughts. So they're bulkier, um, you know, they can take more damage. So yeah, now if we were to do a free for all, you know, putting one dreadnought of every style, who do you think would come out on top? Um, in my opinion, it'd probably be a uh, Contemptor, but I don't know if they could dish out the damage as well as take it. So it's, 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 an, it's, it's, up, it's up in the air. I'm trying to see a free-for-all dreadnought battle would be amazing. Uh, if you guys know of a battle report like that, you know, send us the link. We can, we'll check it out. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's all I've got for you guys. Don't forget, we do have giveaways that have been going on through the past week uh, now the winners will be revealed this week so keep your eyes open keep your eyes peeled so maybe you guys can be that awesome winner um so yeah and if not you know just wait till next month uh, we do these viewer appreciation giveaways we try to do them every month um so keep your eyes peeled for that don't forget guys we do have a facebook page so go on over there if you guys want to talk to us hit us up with a message now we do post 40k things and uh 
other nerdy stuff like that every day. So check us out on Facebook. Uh, we do have a Twitter, an Instagram, and a Patreon. Uh, if you guys want to be our patrons, Patreon is only a simple dollar a month. It helps us bring these giveaways to you, and it gives us more incentive to do these 40 facts and whatnot videos. So check us out there. And I think I've talked way too much at the end, so I'm going to end it there. <laughs> As always, guys, I'm the Sound Alchemist, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh,